All right, thanks for coming out. I'll try to make this as, as uh, fast as possible tonight, but there's a lot of information that I want to share uh, that's important. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and sit down because I'm just going to wander around and get in everybody's way. So I'll sit down and get out of the way. Uh, the important part is on the screen, and Caden's getting that for people who aren't here that uh, we'll watch later. So uh, first off, uh, like Tim said already, that iPad that's going around, we really need to get that information filled out. What's happened to date is, as you're, most of you are probably aware, we've got an email chain, and over the years we've added people, and the only time they ever get taken off is when they, the kids graduate and they ask, because we haven't broken it out by classes. And so what we're trying to do is get a better list of all of the contact information for both the players and parents, and uh, also divide it out by class so that once your player graduates, it'll just roll off and it won't be part of the uh, constant communication that uh, so many graduated players, parents get. Uh, so we're trying to do a better job of that. The other thing that we're doing is we're converting over to a new system that will help us not only in our communications, but also in every element of our program. So for example, it's going to help us with our uh, roster management, with our depth charts, with our inventory of equipment, with our contact information and communication, uh, just a whole wide variety of, of uh, different things that are important for the program just from a management standpoint. And so that, that uh, program is called War Room. The players have all been asked to sign up for that and fill out a, a player profile. Uh, most have, well, some have. Uh, if you are one of those who hasn't, please get that done because here in another week, we're not gonna communicate via huddle anymore. We're gonna communicate via War Room. The nice thing about War Room is that we can tailor the uh, communications to either players or parents or both, or we can do it by class, or we've got different ways that we can uh, cut it up so that we can co communicate more effectively to those who need the immediate communication. Okay, so players, please get that done. The information that you're inputting into the iPad uh, from a parent and guardian standpoint will get that input uh, on your behalf in the war room, so you don't need to worry about that. Just get it, uh, get it there. And as Tim said, uh, probably a lot of you, we already have your contact information. Please go ahead and input it again because we just want to make sure everybody's included and we get everything um, categorized as it should be. Yeah. If uh, a player's playing baseball and it's not at spring practice, do they have the information that you want to order? So what, okay, so the question was... You should uh, stand up so No, I'm not going to stand up and give you away. <laughs> the, that's my wife, by the way. I'm going to introduce her in a minute. Okay, so the question was, if they're playing baseball, do we have, have their information? We don't. What we'll need at the end of this meeting is if anybody who hasn't been to a practice yet could come down and see Tim, then uh, he'll get that information, we'll get it input into Huddle, and then transfer it over to, uh, into War Room, okay? Okay, let, let me, uh, before we go any further, let me introduce a few people uh, so you know uh, as we're referring to people who it is. First of all, if we can introduce Tim Brown, Tim is um, our director, director of football operations. He's also uh, this year an assistant coach. Uh, most of the communications that you receive will come from Tim. And you will also probably more often than not communicate with him unless I beat him to it. This is bugging me. Good deal, good deal. Well, I guess if I'm standing in front of that, I'm okay. What, the, the, the ideal guys to why he's getting that is that I am Coach Miller's buffer. If it's a critical, critical thing that only a head coach can do, then at that point in time, go to him. But 99.999% of issues come to me. And then if, it's, if I need to get Coach Miller involved, I will. Um, that even goes as far as, I, hey, I don't know why my kid's not playing, or I don't, any of that stuff, talk to me first. And if I need to get it up the stream to Coach Miller, we will. But my goal is to protect his time. And to, and to take care as much as I can. With that said, uh, we can introduce some of our coaches that are here. Not everybody's here, but those that are. We've got Justin Wilbur, our defensive coordinator. Uh, J Jared Kilgore, outside linebackers. Talmadge Brown, 
Running backs, Jared Blake, offensive, or Jared wow. Blake. Wow. 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 Yes. Parker Blake, <laughs> offensive line. Uh, Bob Weinberger is our academic coach. Uh, John's here somewhere. Jay Webster decided to show up, so he's walking in right now. John Burke is, uh, what are you, John, your offensive line as well. Uh, anybody else here that I missed? Oh, Toby. Oh, Toby. Toby Steins is wide receivers. And we've got a, a couple coaches who couldn't make it tonight. In addition, I asked my wife to be here tonight, Nicole Miller, just to show that I'm not a complete ogre to everybody. <laughs> and, and so if you don't believe that, you can ask her after. Okay. So just a, a couple of slides here, talking about some of our history. Uh, for those who are new to the program or, or considering the program, Region champs 2016, 17, and 18. Uh, state champs in 2018. Uh, this is, you probably can't read any of that. That's, that's the press release, or the press release, I guess, that was sent out when I was hired uh, as the uh, head football coach. Just to give you an idea, I've had three kids uh, that have attended Summit in some way, shape, or form. Uh, my son, Justin, uh, graduated from here. He was the first one that came. He currently plays quarterback at Southern Utah. Uh, I had a daughter, Marin, went all four years here. She was a cheerleader. Uh, and then uh, I had a son, Ben, who just went here for a semester. It wasn't a good fit for him, and I'm, I'm willing to talk about that because not everybody is a good fit for Summit or, and vice versa. So he uh, left after one semester, went back to Lone Peak, and he's a senior at Lone Peak. Then I have two others. I've got one on the front end and one on the back end. Uh, my oldest lives up in Logan with her husband and baby. And then uh, my daughter, Grace, is a seventh grader. So, and she may or may not come here. Depends on what she wants to do. Uh, to give you some history as well with uh, past achievements for some of our players, these were our all state and all region <coughs> players this past year. Uh, those who are at the banquet are familiar with these. Uh, these, these guys were recognized. Uh, that's for a little school like Summit Academy, that's a lot of uh, players that, that uh, were awarded in some way, shape, or form this past season. Just to put that in perspective, I went, because I'm one of those dorks, I went and looked at every school in the Wasatch Front, outside of Corner Canyon, we had more kids receive all state than any other high school in the Wasatch Front period of all classifications. So it's a pretty big deal. And uh, one other thing is we send, for whatever reason, I think there's a, a couple of very specific reasons, we send a lot of kids to the next level if they want to. And so this past year, well, I'll get to the, this past year, these are the guys who are currently playing. Uh, that's my son on the upper left. Uh, upper right is Casey Briggs. He was the quarterback of the state championship team, right? And then um, Talmadge Brown. Talmadge is headed to Southern Utah at some point, but he's a uh, coach this year. Uh, he's supposed to go in January. And then uh, JT uh, Kupek was a tight end for us a couple years ago. He's at Snow College, and they start playing here in a couple of weeks with their spring schedule. Okay, um, these are some of the guys who are uh, this year got offered or committed. Uh, I think that of those that are committed, uh, and actually of those that are offered, there were actually more than those, more offers. For example, um, Jackson Case and Titan Kilgore got multiple offers. Uh, Porter Galvan got a couple of offers as well. Uh, Braden Talbot has more than that offer. I just couldn't list them all because I didn't know what they all were. But that's eight guys. We actually had one more that got an offer. So that's nine kids from this little school that got offers just this year. Um, I would be willing to bet that um, Riverton didn't have that many, probably Harriman, certainly Mountain Ridge. Um, I think we do a pretty good job if kids want to go to the next level of helping them find a place, wherever that is. Um, all right, so we'll get into to some of the stuff program-wise. Okay, the, uh, the first thing to talk about is weights and conditioning. I'm gonna let um, Coach Wilbur talk about that. He's actually running the weights class that we have A1 and B5. Uh, he's also helping out a little bit with B6. And then he'll talk about also the after school and the completely on your own uh, programs that we have set up. Okay, so a couple things 
Like you said, we have our weights and our strength and conditioning class, class A1, B5, and then we have some football players in the B6 class as well. So the same same thing is taken all the way through. Uh, the coach of that, Coach Co, the teacher of that class, basically lets me come in and actually take the football players separate from the rest of the, the group, so it's actually really good. Um, the big thing with that, we have our workout programs to do strength and explosion, endurance, and it, it's varying every single week. Um, if you can't be in one of those classes, the term just changed last Friday. If you can get into one of those three classes, that'd be fantastic. If you can't, that's okay too. We do have our after school weights program as well. Three o'clock, right? 145 to three o'clock. Uh, Coach Steins is in there running that. The same workouts that we have in our uh, weights classes are the same things they do. A lot of the times the kids aren't getting done all the way with their, with their program during class, so they come and finish up, which is fantastic. So freshmen, you're invited in to come to those classes at one, or not classes, but at 1.45 to three o'clock. If you can't make it to that, whether you're a freshman or not, we will also, kind of a, as a last resort, put those things on War Room, which is this thing that's gonna be coming out. So you'll have weekly workouts every single week, emailed and or texted. Um, you can follow along if you ever have questions about any of the stuff that's on there, different movements or whatnot, or if you don't have access to certain things, come talk to me. We'll modify it to whatever you have access to. Um, the other thing part, the other part about that, uh, working out is not just lifting, it's also eating, right? You gotta eat to build. So you gotta be consuming calories. For those of you that need to put on weight, for those of you who don't need to put on weight, maybe not, right? But consume calories. And I think almost everyone on our team needs to gain weight. So with that, if you're gonna be lifting, make sure you're fueling that muscle. Eat, 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 eat as much as you possibly can. That doesn't mean sit down and eat a, a pint of Ben and Jerry's, right? That means eat real good foods. Anything that you can make at home, eggs, tuna, whatever the case might be, load up with protein, load up with good carbohydrates. And if, you're about, if you have questions about that, if you're trying to put on weight, I've had multiple conversations with, uh, with different players about, you know, they know where they're at, they know where they wanna be. We've done a, a kind of configuration of what their body is actually burning on a regular basis and what they need to eat to be able to hit their goals. So with that being said, if, you have, if any player has questions about what they should be eating, how many calories they should be eating, come talk to me, easy. If you can't, if you're not here at the school, text me, hit me up on War Room, whatever. If you need a, a more personalized plan, if, you're, if you don't have access to a gym outside the, if you're not able to make it here, you don't have access to a gym, you have other things, come talk to me, we'll modify something for you to be able to do at home, okay? Um, anything else from that? Hey, just, just, I'm gonna stress one thing real quick. For those of you who are in a spring sport or not in a spring sport, I need you guys there after school. I have probably three or four kids who actually have spring sports. They finish school, they go lift, and they go to their spring sport. So they're doubling up, which is great, which is exactly where we need to be. So get your butts in there. We need more kids in there working hard. Uh, as most of you guys know, if you guys are jacking around, you guys are done, you guys are out. It's in there, we're all serious in there. So I need as many kids in there as we can. The other thing is, I know some of the workouts are actually pretty hard sometimes. We just got doing 10 by 10s last week, and they were grueling, okay? If you are playing another sport and you can't do the workout that day and you need a light day, come let me know. We'll modify the workout so you can still get your workouts in before your other sports, okay? Just a, just a couple of things to add on to that. First of all, when Coach Wilbur's talking about freshmen, he really means freshmen next year. So if you're an eighth grader, you are more than welcome to come if you're able to. I know some of you guys get out of school a little bit later or you're in Copper Hills or wherever it is, there's some travel involved. Um, you would probably fall into the category of getting it done on your own at this point. But if you're a, an eighth grader at a school nearby, I know the Summit School is let out a little earlier, so in, you know, kind of in line with the high school. And if you can make, your, make yourself available over here, you are more than welcome and encouraged to come over. Um, second thing is, in terms of other sports, I'm, I'm a big advocate of multiple sports. Okay, um, baseball players are kind of set. If you're a baseball player, you already know you're a baseball player. But I, I let everybody know a couple of weeks ago that if you're not sure and you wanna go out for track, go out for track, okay? It's gonna make you better in whatever you're doing, whether it's speed, endurance, um, even if you're doing jumps or throws or whatever, be a part of that if, if you want to. I highly encourage it. 
and I know a few guys did um, did get signed up and they're doing that uh, right now. Same thing obviously with soccer. Soccer, if you're a soccer guy, you already know it. So you'll know, be a part of those spring sports, but make sure to do your very best to get those workouts in uh, in the weight room. That's a big part of, of what we're doing and what we're getting ready for in the fall. Uh, and you will feel a difference uh, if you are doing it versus if you aren't getting those workouts in. We've okay. seen a huge um, uptick in the amount of weight that kids have been able to lift. Um, and a lot of them are actually growing and put on, putting on weight already. Some of the big things that we're actually focusing on is making sure that we build masks around those joints to get hurt. Uh, to protect ourselves, making sure our shoulders and back and chest and knees and those type of things have enough strength around them so that we can actually eliminate or, you know, reduce the amount of injuries we actually have throughout the season. So. Okay, one, one other thing with that, because we're on an A-day, B-day schedule, the, the kids will only get a maximum of three days in the weight room. So these, these after school uh, opportunities or working out on your own, that's also a big thing. Okay, so, so to the extent that we can, don't just limit it to the two or three times in class, but also the extra time that you have um, outside of class. Okay. All right, a uh, few program goals that I wanted to go over. Um, we'll go over them quickly, but they are very important and kind of the, the foundation of what I want to accomplish uh, and what I talked to the administration about when I was first hired. Uh, first of all, we want to excel on the playing field in the classroom and in the community. We'll talk about the classroom in just a second. We'll have a team first emphasis. We'll transform each student athlete into the best person that they can be. That's uh, one of our goals is not just the best football player, but the best person. Uh, continue to have a, uh, a family atmosphere. I think that's a really important part of uh, what Summit Academy is and what we'll continue to be. Uh, build a sense of pride for the football program. We want to do that within the administration, within the faculty, within the student body, uh, obviously within the team. We're going to give back through service. We'll, we'll have some service activities that we'll be a part of. Uh, we want to teach football but emphasize life lessons as a part of that. Every single year we want to compete for a region and state title. And uh, last but certainly not least, we definitely want to have fun. If, if we're not having fun doing this, uh, football can be a very, very uh, grueling activity that is uh, hard to put up with if you're not having fun. So that's a big part of it as well. Okay. In terms of the academic standards, and I, I uh, let the parents know this a couple of weeks ago, I think, but I just want to reiterate that and for those who haven't heard it yet. The minimum standard at the end of the fourth quarter of the school year is that a player can't have more than one F and they have to have a minimum of, of a 2.0 GPA in order to be eligible for fall sports. Okay, so in May, May's driving what you're allowed to do in the fall. Okay, then what happens again is at the end of the first quarter, which just so, ha which just so happens to be right before our first playoff game, they have another check. And that same standard applies at that point in time. And often what will happen, in my experience here, is we'll, we'll have a handful of players that we don't know if they're going to be eligible for the first playoff game because they're on the border with their grades. And so my hope is that we can completely take that away. We're going to have, rather than weekly up-downs that the players have been used to in the past couple of years, we're just going to draw a line in the sand and say, if at any point your grades fall below that minimum standard, at any point in the season, there's going to be a suspension. Okay, and that suspension will be practice. It may be a game. It may be multiple practices. Until the grades get back up to where they need to be from an eligibility standpoint, I'm willing to sacrifice whoever that player is, starter, non-starter, varsity, JV, doesn't matter. Okay, that's how important I think grades are. So I, I would hope that from a parental standpoint, you're supportive of that. Um, I understand that there are some ramifications that are not necessarily good. But if we can jump on this and change the culture that we've had, okay, and the handful of players that um, always seem to get their work done in time, okay, but they just cause us all a lot of stress on the way, we're going to get rid of that. Okay. 
So, so that's what our standard's gonna be. Coach Bob has something to add. I, we're also gonna have, is that, that's the one side, we also have a positive approach. Then we're gonna have study halls. We're gonna we coordinate with uh, the Honor Society. They use, uh, uh, they need uh, uh, service hours. So they're gonna come and we'll set up study halls and we'll work with the individual boys on that stuff. So we'll be doing that. Yeah. Coach, one thing real quick. Coach Scott last year, the college recruiter. Students, if you have any desire to go play college ball and you're going around a 2.0 GPA, you will never get approved. Yes. Because college coaches have multiple athletes that are pushing the envelope. And if they have to worry about your grades and what you're doing on a regular basis, they're going to pick somebody else who has a much better, much higher GPA than you. So if you have any desire to go to the next level of playing football and you're right at that 2.0 level, your chances of getting recruited are slim to none. So keep that in mind. Okay, thank you for that. But we will be working with you and then we're we're available if you, any of the parents want to call us or, or te uh, email us or whatever, we'll be happy to work with you too. All right, yeah. thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. Now, what, one additional thing, and I know it, at times this is a concern, sometimes teachers don't get their grades in when they should, and so the, you know, there might be an F reflected when it's actually a B plus. Okay, I understand that. So we'll use some latitude. Uh, we're gonna try to work with the teachers to, to get grades updated as quickly as possible. Uh, I will have a little bit of a grace period for them to, to work on it, but the expectation stays the same. Okay, we do need to get our grades up as a whole and stop messing around at the 2.0 level. So thank you, Jason. Okay, any questions with that? If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. All right, we talked about this the other day. Uh, on Saturday when we got snowed out, we talked about this a little bit as a team. Okay, things that require no talent. I'm a big believer in motivational quotes and little things like this. I think they make a difference. Uh, when you sit down and think about it. So some of the, the little things that are kind of on my expectation list that make a difference and don't require any talent at all. Okay, Be on time, have a work ethic, uh, show effort, body language is important, having energy is important, good attitude, be passionate, passionate about what you're doing, whether it's football or school or whatever that might be. Uh, be coachable, do the little extra things and be prepared. Okay. All right, so, so like I said, little quotes, right? The enemy of the best is the good. If you're always settling with what's good, you'll never be the best. That's from Jerry Rice, okay? All right, this is, again, I, appre I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. This right here is one of the reasons that, um, that I wanted to get together. We're, I was starting to have some questions about our summer schedule, and so uh, I wanted to go through it really quickly, give you guys an idea of what to expect. A lot of it will be pretty similar to what the schedule has been like in the past, but some things are going to be different. Okay, one of the, excuse me, one of the biggest differences this year is that we don't have any teachers on staff. Okay, so we've got all uh, volunteer uh, outside professionals. The only one that's ever in the school and he's not even here full time is Coach Weinberger. Okay, so uh, we d we adjusted some of our practice plans to uh, account for that. Okay, but with some of those adjustments, I think we've got some, some solutions as well. So from a, a spring standpoint, all of our spring practices are gonna be Thursday nights, okay, from 5.30 to 8, and it's gonna be Saturday mornings from 7.30 to 10. Okay, now whenever we have a practice scheduled for more than two and a half hours, or for more than two hours, okay, you can assume there's something associated with that. In this case, we're gonna be watching some film in the, in the springtime. Okay, part of, the, part of the reason for that is we've got a new offense, somewhat new offense, and our offensive coordinator wants us to be watching film. So uh, of those two and a half hours, about 20 minutes are gonna be in film, then we'll get out on the field and we'll, we'll work for a couple of hours. Okay, you'll also notice that that practice time on Thursday is a little bit later. Okay, one of the things that uh, we've talked about is, as Coach Weinberger just said, we're gonna set up a study hall so kids can be in study hall use that time that they're hanging around the school if they don't go home uh, they can use that more effectively and, and work on grades during that time obviously Saturday is not an issue 
okay? The other reason we wanted to do Saturday is to help us, hopefully, encourage some of those spring athletes to be a part of what we're doing in the springtime. Okay, whenever they don't have a Saturday conflict, uh, the chances are less that they will on Saturday than, than if we did a Tuesday, Thursday, so we're gonna, so we're, we're gonna do that, okay? So that's the reason for some of that changes, uh, or some of those changes, we'll go March. Hey, really quick, where's the iPad at? Do we, is this still being passed around? Okay, make sure, guys, really quick, because I know some of you guys came in later, you cannot, cannot, cannot leave tonight until you put everything in that iPad. So please make sure you get it and just pass, keep passing around. All right, I just realized I wasn't on the Only calendar. On the network. So here's the calendar. Okay, so not, nothing, nothing different through March. Okay, you can just see the Thursday, Saturdays. April's the same, Thursday, Saturday. Then we get into May. Okay, May's gonna be mostly the same until we get to the end of May. And that last week of May, we're gonna go every night. The reason for that is we expect at some point there to be a YouTube. We haven't gotten any information on it. We assume it's gonna be probably the first weekend in June, okay? But we're gonna use that last week in May every night to kind of tune up in advance of that. So that's the reason for that. We won't practice on that, on that last Saturday uh, so that the kids can have the long weekend and the families can have the long weekend, okay? And then we'll be back at it Starting uh, June 1st, we'll have our summer explosion camp, okay? And instead of, as we've done in the past, Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings, we're gonna go Tuesday, Thursday, evening, Saturday morning, okay? So it'll be consistent with what we did in the springtime. We'll still get that same amount of time in, but it's just gonna be a little bit more, uh, lack, for lack of a better term, coach friendly, okay? So I know that that's a little bit late, Obviously, school's not in session, so that's not an issue. And hopefully, the players uh, don't get into trouble because all we do is make them practice in the evening. So um, there was a little bit of thought behind that, besides just selfish coaches. And by the way, th this calendar, um, that you can go to the school's website, and there's a link under it on the athletic section. I can also, in the email, it's, send out a link. Oh, yeah, it's on War Room. Okay, so once you're signed up for War Room, you oh. could, it's already up. Okay. Yep. Okay, so then we get it. We get into the meat of June. There, there will be hopefully these are tentative right now, but hopefully three seven-on-seven seven tournaments. The U shoot, we're going to host one, and then the Manti tournament, which we've done in the past. Okay, so if there is a weekend tournament on or a Saturday tournament, we'll move that Saturday practice to Friday. Okay, so we'll have a little bit of uh, of an adjustment there, but. Uh, that's kind of the best way we can do it. That tournament here on the 19th, uh, that is gonna be ours. I didn't write that in, but we're gonna try to go the 17th, 18th, and 19th, uh, Frost Soft, JV, and then Varsity on Saturday, okay? That'll be one of, hopefully, uh, the better fundraisers that we do if we can pull it off right. But that's in process right now. These plans will all firm up as we get closer and, and um, dates come out and all that kind of stuff, okay? Then, once we get past June and into July, we'll just have this first July first practice, and then the, the week from July 4th to July 10th is, is football moratorium. So there's no practice that week, okay, by state mandate, okay, and Sunday as well. Then we'll come back the 12th through the uh, 16th. That'll be our summer acclimatization period. We'll have equipment handed out already at that point and we're getting ready for our summer camp, which will be the following week, okay? So we have to have five practices, uh, then we get into our summer camp. Our summer camp's gonna be a little bit different. We're going down to Southern Utah. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that. One of the benefits though is we get an extra day, so that's nice, okay? Another benefit for, for me is I get to see my son, but because of that, okay, we're gonna, we, and I've already talked to the coaches down there, we're gonna get the benefit of having some of the Southern Utah players uh, coach when we're down there. And they're also gonna meet with our players in the evenings uh, and talk to them a little bit about what it took to get there, their experiences and that type of thing. So we've got some, some firsthand experience from some Division I players that they're gonna share with us on the field and then also uh, talk to us about. So we got a little benefit there. Uh, then when we come back, because we've got this long weekend with Pioneer Day on the 24th, 
Okay, we've decided to give everybody a few, few extra days off, so if families want to do something for that long weekend, we'll live with it, okay? Starting on the 29th, practice is mandatory, there will be consequences, okay? And I'm not talking about I'm gonna be mean and do angry things, there's just consequences when you miss practice. So there's gonna be um, extra conditioning or um, some unfortunate thing that they have to survive if they're gonna miss practice once we get to that point, okay? Then the following week, we start into two-a-days, okay? Then we have um, our last week of, fall, of pre, I guess, preschool practice, and then our first game against Cottonwood, okay? From then on, we get into the season, and you can see the schedule as we go down. We, we start at Cottonwood, then we're at San Juan, then we're at home versus Star Valley, okay? So that's our same schedule from last year, only reversed in terms of home and away. The next game is against Beaver, Beaver, for those who aren't aware, two-time defending 2A state champion. Three out of four. And they lost the one that they didn't win. Okay, so. Lost the one they didn't win. <laughs> Three out of four. They lost in the finals the year they didn't win. That's what I meant to say. I know but they I won three out of four. Did they win three out of four? Three out of four. Okay, so if we're, if we're expecting to get a state championship, we're probably gonna have to go through Beaver at some point. So Coach Hamilton left, left us this little present before he left and said, go ahead and play Beaver in week four, okay? Then we get um, Millard next week, and then we get into our new region schedule, which is our new two-way, I don't know what reg region number it is. Uh, it I think it's just north and south. Okay, yeah, so two-way north. So we have uh, ALA that we played last year in the playoffs. We've got South Summit, who was in our region last year. Judge that we played. Providence Hall we played out of region last year, and then Emory will be a new team for us, okay? So, that, so that'll be the regular season schedule, and then whatever happens after that, after that in the playoffs. Okay, you will notice that I've got practice uh, basically up until the very end here. This would be the state final, one of these two days, the 12th or the 13th. Okay, so. Right, go back a day two. I want to just make a note, because we're getting the question, so plan now. Notice the week of Emory, the 15th. This is fall break slash UEA these two days. Emory, however, does not have the same fall break as us. It is at Emory. So we will probably be playing on Saturday as of right now. So unfortunately, there will be no fall break for us. So just want to be prepared, everyone. Let everyone know now. It'll be Friday. It'll be Friday. But, but we won't have, we, we, normally we would be off Thursday and Friday. We won't we will be this year because Emory will have the game on Friday. Which sucks if anybody that hunts the deer, that's one of the deer hunts weekends this year. So, kind of sucks. I was trying, Coach Miller and I were actually gonna go hunting together this year and we figured that out and that went to deer hunt. So just be aware of that day. Let's hope Didn't that that work. doesn't happen. But as of right now, that's the way the schedule's going down is Emory's fall break is different than ours. Okay, so this is just a commentary on what, what I just talked about. The only difference here, Players we had talked about, we talked about this on Saturday or Thursday. Um, we were going to start our team competitions this uh, first part of March. We're going to put that off until June just because we got so many things going on. Ken, are you trying to get my attention or are you just? No. Okay. All right, so th this we talked about. Uh, all right, when we get to camp, okay, let's st we'll start talking about some fees here and some timing. Uh, camp fees for SUU. Uh, is a little bit more. I think last year it was 275. Uh, this year it's uh, 300. Uh, more, more, more than that difference uh, can be accounted for in the fact that we get an extra day. Okay, so this is actually a little bit better deal for us uh, going down to SUU, but it's fairly close. So um, hopefully that's not a big deal, and we'll talk about that in a second anyway. Okay, here's our schedule. Beginning July, uh, July 29th, practice is mandatory. Uh, we'll have makeups if uh, mispractices occur at that point. Remember, players, we will still be doing the dirty dozen. Okay, part of the dirty dozen is your attendance. Okay, not that it's again, not that I can call it mandatory, but it's certainly helpful to be there. Okay, so we will be keeping attendance throughout the spring, throughout the summer, as part of the dirty dozen competition. Just so you know. Okay, that, that's not going away. Also, the Golden Bears are still in play. Okay, so just so you know that. 
All right, uh, blue gold game, just so you know, that's gonna be the last practice of two a days. It'll be the same format that we've done in the past. Uh, freshman versus JV, varsity guys are the coaches, okay, for that game. So that'll be at seven o'clock, our first kind of game day experience. All right, in terms of costs, uh, costs have gone up a little bit, but I can tell you almost exactly to the dollar where, okay. First of all, we got the summer camp, that's just $25 more than it was. Okay, then we go through the rest of it. Summer explosion, uh, seven on seven tournaments, uh, participation fee, uniform rental, those are all generally the same. The big difference there is Spirit Pack, okay? Let me talk just for a second about Spirit Pack. Historically, what we've done is we've allowed the players to decide whether or not they want a Spirit Pack, okay? The end result of that is that when we go out to practice, we wind up with players wearing some spirit pack, but we also end up with players wearing uh, spirit packs from Bingham and Copper Hills and Riverton and Harriman and Lehigh and all kinds of different schools, okay? And the reason is they don't have Summit Academy gear to wear, okay? Or the other possible reason is they think that gear's cooler, so they wear the other stuff, okay? We're not gonna do that anymore, okay? I'm gonna make, as part of the fees, um, that spirit pack will be mandatory. Okay, again, we'll talk about how to pay for it if you need to in just a second. Okay, but what we're looking for uh, from our team is number one, before we can become a team, we gotta look like a team. Okay, so we've got players wearing the proper colored gear. If you don't have gear, and that's fine, uh, especially in the springtime, uh, we've given them, in, ca in case you don't know already, we've given them a couple of shirts, uh, some shorts, and they got shirts, I believe, uh, when I was introduced. So they've already got three new shirts and shorts that uh, they never had before, okay? So that's, that's a good thing, I think. Uh, but if they don't have enough as we're going through spring practice, the only thing I'd ask is that you wear sp uh, school colors, okay? School colors are really easy because they're white, navy, and not a Vegas gold, but a yellowy gold, okay? Super easy to do um, if you need to, you know, go buy a couple of cheap, cheap, cheap shirts, then you can do that and it won't cost you very much, okay? But that's what we're asking for is that stuff, okay? Now, I realize when it's cold out, maybe you don't have that and that's fine, okay? If the colors aren't perfect when it's freezing cold and you gotta wear outer gear, uh, we're okay with that. The other thing that we'll accept is, Tim, we got the iPad over there. The other thing that we'll accept is gray. Gray's okay, because it's kind of generic. Um, if it, worst case scenario, you have to wear black, we'll live with black, okay? But we want to be a, lo a lot more uniform than we've been, and part of that is just how we look on who the needs, practice uh, field. Where are we going to start? All right, kind of here and then just go back up. Yeah. Okay, so in terms of, I, I realize that's a little bit more than what you've paid in the past, uh, hopefully not too much, uh, but in terms of paying for it, we've got a few different options okay uh, that, that uh, the players can be a part of uh, and this is the first one there's several okay one of those is uh, some of the fundraising so you'll see if you've been to a game before uh, there's company logos on the scoreboard there's banners around the fences on the stadium okay a couple of things that we're going to add this year that we haven't done in the past okay if there's a player out there who can sell the naming rights to the stadium have at it if you want to have Domino's Pizza pay $5,000, they get naming rights for a year, okay? And if you do that, all of your football fees are covered, okay? I know that's kind of a big ask. I'm not unrealistic, okay? But Larry H. Mueller might want to do it. Yeah, come on. <laughs> okay, in addition to that, we're not just going to limit it at the stadium. We can give away field rights, okay? So if you want to have somebody name the field for a year, Okay, the Lane to Spain field, then we can do that. Okay, same thing, $5,000 pays for all your, all your fees for the year. Okay, and then it goes down from there. There's ads on the scoreboard, there's ads in the program, different sizes, um, there's the banners. Okay, all of those have an, have an associated cost and also a benefit for the player. Okay, so that's one way that you can defray some of those costs is uh, to sell some of that advertising, okay? Another way is um, a couple of the fundraisers we're doing, okay? We're in the middle of a fundraiser right now. Let me explain it to you, because um, 
Some of the eighth graders aren't aware of what we're doing. Uh, some of the current players may not be aware of what we're doing. Okay, what, the, what this fundraiser is, it's a, it's a company called Trip Boomerang. Okay, and if you think about when you go online to book a hotel, if you've ever gone online to book a hotel, say you go to hotels.com, and that, that inventory of hotels that are available, say you find a hotel that's $100, okay? Well, if you go to Trip Boomerang, you'll find that exact same inventory and that exact same hotel for $100. Only these coupons that we're promoting, okay, if they were to cost $25, for example, they would have a benefit of $50. So that $50 could buy down that $100 price on your hotel by some amount. It's, some, it's not gonna be all $50, but say it's 30, okay? And so now instead of $100, that um, hotel only costs you $70, and it costs you about, I don't know, 15 for that benefit. So net, you save $15, okay? As the numbers get bigger and the stays get longer, okay, that benefit becomes bigger. I, I'm a big um, fan of this. I, I've been aware of Trip Boomerang for a long time. I use it, at least I try to use it every time I travel, uh, and it's always been a benefit in some way, shape, or form. So what we're doing is, I've asked the players, okay, and Tim has asked some of the parents, okay, to just simply on your, on your social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, I've never tried it on Twitter, but any platform, just simply send out the message that we've um, crafted, okay? It just says, hey, we're trying to raise funds for Summit Academy football. This goes to benefit um, our team. If you donate such amount, we'll give you cards of such amount. So if you get a $25 donation, we'll return that $25 with a $50 uh, gift certificate, okay? That's all we're trying to do. and and. Uh, I did this for my, I told you my other son uh, doesn't play here, he goes to Lone Peak. We did it for him for his football season. He was able to, him alone, raise $350 uh, just through posting it on Instagram for a couple of months, okay? So it's a really effective way to do it. The big thing that we're trying to do, so everybody's clear, um, I'm trying to raise funds not from this group. This group already pays too much. Okay, I'm sure you'd agree with that. I don't want this group to pay for our football program. I want to try to access the community. Okay, Your friends and neighbors who may be willing to and interested in supporting us that don't even know there's an opportunity. Okay, that's what I'm trying to gain access to with this type of fundraiser. Okay, um, If there's any questions about that, we can talk about it some more afterwards, but that's the general gist of this. So far, we, we've, re, we, excuse me, We've raised, as of this afternoon, $1,275, okay? Just through those posts, okay? No other effort than that, okay? Which is great so far. I think we've only done a fraction of what we're capable of doing um, if everybody were to get involved, primarily if players were to continually repost. See, what happens is on your feed, it disappears after a little while, and so I just ask them to repost it, okay? So that it's at the top of their feed, people are aware of it, and we've got it at the top of mind. Okay, uh, I, I think it's a really great way to do it. Um, I think a lot of you will find it's a great way to do it. Some of you might not like it, but fundraising's kind of a painful reality we all have to be a part of. So hopefully that works. The second thing we're gonna do, we've done this in the past, is we've done a spring um, Domino's pizza card or something like that. We don't wanna do Domino's this year, we wanna do something else. I've gotten a few ideas as to selling some of those discount cards, but we'll try to do something like that, raise some money in that way. Uh, the summertime program has always been Snap Raise. We've been very successful with that in the past, so I don't want to give that up. Uh, but then in addition, we'll do um, the 7-on-7 seven seven tournament. We think we can raise some money through, and then possibly some other uh, ideas. I'm meeting with um, our fundraising committee here, sh hopefully shortly in the next few weeks, and we'll have together a better plan as far as that goes. But, and what I haven't discussed is, if your players, you probably can't see that if you're in the back or far away, but if your players get to a certain point in their fundraising, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give them a ben benefit. We're gonna give them a discount off of their football fees. If the team as a whole does it, okay, I would like to get them custom Summit Academy Bears football gloves, okay, something that you're probably gonna get anyway, 
but I'd like to get them if we can get to those fundraising numbers. I'd like to get them additional spirit wear if they meet those numbers. So lots of different things that we can do to benefit you and your players financially if we can get enough money raised. Okay, that's, that's the goal. Again, I know it's not a fun subject, okay, but it's kind of a reality when we're in a place that doesn't give us a big allocation from a big school board. Uh, we just get a little allocation and then we have to kind of do what we can with it. Okay, and that includes buying all of our equipment and footballs and uniforms and all that kind of stuff. My big thing is I want to be able to give back to our players as much as any other program in the state. Okay, my son playing last year would come home randomly from practice and have a beanie or a t-shirt or shorts that they just got to practice that day. Okay, I would love to be able to do that for our players. Okay, but it's only it's not going to come through your you know, charging you more and more and more, it's gonna come through our, our fundraising, okay? So that's, that's the goal there, and that's what we'd like to accomplish, okay? Uh, all right, so what are we gonna do with some of this money? Okay, uh, parents, you'll recognize Deion Sanders. Players may not even know who he is. You guys all know who Deion is, you players? Prime time, baby. Prime time. So, Deion would say, if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good, all right? So we're gonna play good in part because we look good. Let's talk about how we're gonna look, okay. A few different changes that we're gonna put forth, okay. Some of those changes are, we've talked about a little bit already. Our colors are navy, the yellowish gold, not the Vegas gold, and white. Even more gold than yellow. That's kind of bright still. Hey, it's our shirt. Yeah, I know. Okay, we're only wearing these colors. Okay, that's what we wear to practice. Okay, that's what color our socks are, that's what color our gloves are, that's what color our cleats are, or I give the caveat, because I know it's sometimes hard to find cleats, okay, you can wear black, okay? You can wear black cleats if you want, and you can wear black gloves, okay? I'll, I'll give the players a tiny little concession there. Okay, but other than that, okay, our colors are our colors, okay? So we're gonna wear those. No jewelry at practice, okay? Just one of my things, and that includes necklaces. I don't want people getting things torn off and whatever else might happen. Okay, and then our spirit wear or school colors at practice as well. Okay, just so you know, I don't think I put it on here. Okay, we will have, as opposed to prior years, we will have practice jerseys. Okay, as part of that spirit pack money, a tiny little bit's gonna be allocated to a practice jersey with your player's name on it that they will keep at the end of the season, okay? It drives me nuts when they go out on the field and they wear 12 to practice and 15 to a game, okay? Especially when I'm getting to know them, that's harder than heck, okay? So we're gonna make sure that they're wearing something consistent and that the practice jerseys are a nice quality. In fact, they're as cheap as they are, inexpensive as they are, they're very high quality. The other thing that we're gonna do, and the players aren't gonna like this because I'm telling them for the first time right now, we will wear practice pants, okay? We will wear practice pants when we're in full gear, okay? Because we need to have knee pads on and nobody decides to wear knee pads when we wear shorts, okay? There will be practices where we're in shells, that's when we have shorts on, okay? So, don't like it all you want, but too bad, okay? You're wearing pants to practice, okay? And we're gonna provide those, okay? The, the program will have that. Okay? We will have one game that's pink. Yeah, my mom's a breast cancer survivor, I believe in that, but it's not gonna be random throughout the entire month. We'll just do a one game, yeah. Um, okay, in addition, we've got the, um, just so you know, we've got a new kind of brand for Summit Academy Football, which is there. It's a little bit of a rough color, or a rough design. That helmet uh, logo with the bear head uh, is what's gonna be on one side. The uh, leadership council on Saturday voted me down. They will not let me have bear claws through the numbers. Okay. Yeah. But we will have numbers on the other side and they'll be lighter numbers. They're not gonna be navy. They'll be, they'll be white with a yellow outline. Okay, and they'll be bigger. Okay, so that's what we're doing for that. Um, our gear will now have this bear head on it. Okay, this is our new uh, logo from a letter standpoint and that's the font that we have. Okay, these jerseys have been ordered. Okay, they're on their way. They're based off of a Cal Bears design, in case anybody thinks they look familiar. They give us the option to, to mix and match so we can go 
white tops on yellow, blue on blue as well, okay? Once we fundraise enough, we'll get a third jersey that's a gold. Okay. It does look black, but that's navy blue. Yeah, that's... Just to, just to be clear, it looks black on that, but yeah, it's navy blue. It's navy. Okay, so, so we'll return to the um, third jersey as soon as we fundraise. It'll probably be next season, so seniors, sorry. Okay, the uh, younger guys are gonna inherit the prior Nike jerseys. Okay, so JV and freshman, you're gonna get the whites and the yellows. The grays, we're gonna have a bonfire and burn because they're the ugliest uniforms ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is, um, Tim, Tim has, for, the, for those who have received the emails for a while, this is uh, a sample of what our new weight racks are gonna look like. And okay, we've got eight of them. They're gonna be here mid-April. I just got word last week, okay? In addition, we'll have some bumper plates that are gonna have our logos on them. And generally, everything's gonna be upgraded and look pretty sweet in there. Uh, once we get this done, then the last phase of the weight room will be to fix the walls and get some new stuff on the walls. Uh, I don't wanna say decoration, but it'll be more football and athletics appropriate than whatever's on the walls right now. That, Looks kind of funny. And just so you guys understand, too, the weight room, um, it costs us about, believe it or not, for the floor, that, etc. it was about $30,000. And that's from everybody in this room and a couple of very generous people in this room that made this possible. So this weight room, the football team fundraised 100%. We got no money from the school, no money from any programs. It's from everybody in this room. So it's awesome. That is such a huge thing for you parents. It's big. I don't, I don't want to call anybody out, so I won't, but there were a, a couple of very large donations that we greatly appreciate that I'll allow to remain anonymous. I will also call out some of the coaches. Some of the coaches donated back their stipend to go to the weight room. Um, and those coaches are still here, uh, in case you're wondering. So the, the, there was a lot of generosity directed in that direction uh, for the benefit of these guys. Um, but it's my goal that that's not the end. Okay, I want to continue to to provide them with the top of the line stuff, the top of the line gear, um, the top of the line helmets, the top of the line everything that we can provide them to give them the number one experience that that uh, we can. Uh, with that said, um, team moms, Lonnie or Ruth, do you guys have anything you want to talk about with fundraising or anything else? Uh, no, we're working. We gave them all the better off we are. Okay, so. So they'll, you guys want to raise your hands and let everyone know who you are, okay? Lonnie, Lonnie Watson and Ruth Dixon, they're gonna be our team moms. I know already that some people have talked to them and are getting involved and we greatly appreciate everybody who's plays any kind of role in anything that we're doing, okay? So, uh, all right, in terms of communication, uh, these are some of the things, I did not add war room in here. Uh, because it's so new, but uh, huddle, email, that email will be through War Room, so you know. Uh, we also have another platform that we're going to email through if it's not through War Room. The, the school is uh, converting to this from an athletic standpoint, so we'll have another platform. It won't be from whatever. It's an email that I don't even use anymore. It's the, literally the only emails used for is for football. Yeah, it won't, it won't be, it won't be Tim's, Tim's Yahoo anymore. account, won't be used anymore. No. I, I don't yeah. know that the <laughs> grammar will get any better. Hey, hey, I'm going to just say this right now while everybody's here. I have the worst spelling and the worst grammar. I'm a contractor. Well, I'm we not, know, we know, Tim. I'm not uh, a college <laughs> professor. So, hey, as long as you're good just as ignore it. It's a quick email. Those take me forever as it is. It's not going to get better, just ignore the spell check and the grammar. I hear there's after school study sessions you can do. Nope. Too busy. <laughs> All right, so, so here's the last invitation just for you to get involved. Um, in any way, talk to, to Lonnie and talk to Ruth or talk to Tim, um, and, and we'll get you involved if you've got an interest. Um, it takes everybody to, to make this program work from top to bottom, uh, whether it's on game day or pregame meals or whatever the case may be, uh, even in the off season. We're gonna definitely need some help uh, if we're gonna pull off a seven on seven tournament uh, and the benefits that'll come from that. So, the, and just, just so you're aware, uh, 
obviously, when we do something like that, it's to make money. We, we want to have the snack bar going. We want to, you know, charge teams to come and play. But the other part of that is getting more kids on our campus because we don't have an automatic boundary that they flow to. Uh, we're going to do it at this level with the high school kids first. If it's successful, we're going to try to go to the youth level and create an opportunity to get more seventh and eighth graders on our campus uh, and see what Summit's all about. Hopefully by next year we'll have another state banner that we can hang and uh, let them see as they walk in. Okay, so um, if you need to get a hold of us, at least for now, um, and we'll, we'll put this whole presentation up. We're gonna post it to a YouTube channel that'll be communicated to you. I know some people couldn't make it tonight, but we didn't wanna give advance warning that it was gonna be on YouTube and have three people show up. So we didn't tell you until now, but this will be online so you can see it later, or we'll also get this post, this whole presentation posted so that you can get some of the details you might've missed, okay? But uh, one other thing, just so you're aware of it is uh, because we don't have a coach on campus full-time, uh, we've got Coach Weinberger part of the time with academics, but what I've, what I've uh, told the kids is that I'll be on campus after school on Wednesdays, okay? And if that changes, I'll let them know, but I'll be um, somewhere uh, either in, in uh, Coach Kupek's office or once we get our football office created, um, I'll be there right after school on Wednesday until about 3. Uh, if it's busy, I'll stick around as long as I need to. Okay, but if, if you guys need to come in and talk about whatever it is, grades, football, life, uh, whatever, um, the, the amount that you like, the bear claws on the helmet, um, all of those things are valid reasons, so come on in and we can talk. Like I said, if there's an issue, I'll let you know about it, okay? Um, all right, anybody you else? Want to introduce your no. Just, yeah, let's go. Okay, just a couple quick things. Um, okay, obviously, I really would prefer if you can stick around and get your information on that iPad. It's going to make my life ten Great times job. easier. But if you have to bail and you have not filled it out yet, just come and take a picture of the email and email it to me, all the information. What I need, first and last name of the player, the class of the player, again, what they will be next year. So if you have an eighth grader, that's freshman, okay, for next year. Um, parent one, parent two, emails and phone numbers as well as names. That's the information that we have to have. Um, all that said, this school relies on people coming in, right? We don't have any natural boundaries. The way this school grows and the way this football team grows is everybody in this room. Okay, that's the way that we're successful. So get your friends and family here. Okay, tell them what a great experience you have. Right now, these spring practices that we're doing are just really for fun and for the kids to get to know our program. There's zero obligation. If a kid's waffling, if he's trying to decide where to go, get him here for spring ball. Get them to practices. I don't care if they're at Harriman or Corner Canyon or River to River lifting, come to both right now and just check us out. Then that said, share it on Facebook. Share it on, do whatever you gotta do to tell everybody what a great experience you have. Us as coaches, we cannot do that with one exception. We share Riverton High School's boundaries. So, as a coach, all of us coaches can recruit Riverton High School kids. If a kid is in Riverton's boundaries, we can openly recruit them, just like Riverton's coaches can, but that's it. Other than that, we don't, and we don't want to. We want kids to come here that want to be here. However, that said, there's pros and cons to this school. I have been very fortunate to have two, just like Coach Miller has, have two of my own children come through this program. Um, one of them is one of our coaches right now. He's, he's in between playing a year of football at college, a mission and surgery and another surgery. And so he'll be, he'll be back and playing, playing Division I football. He would have never done that had he not been at this school. Okay, and my other son is the other one. Both of the two cripples, by the way, in the <laughs> sleeves are my two sons. <laughs> one of them, Talmadge's, was from spike ball in high school. It wasn't even football or wrestling, of all things. Having said that, Caden even um, had an opportunity. He's got an offer to play college football. Okay, both of my sons have had opportunities to play college. And I've got another one coming up. 
you don't get those opportunities other places. This is the greatest place in the world to give your kids opportunities. The other thing that is a huge opportunity is your kid's example has, what, 12 varsity letters? Oh, 14 varsity letters. You tell me where other school in the state of Utah can you get 14 varsity letters? Okay, and what did you get, 12? Doesn't matter, a lot, okay? 12, is that what you said? 10. So one of my kids have 10, one of them has 14. And you tell me where they're going to that in any other place in the state. It's because this school allows them to do multiple sports. And do multiple sports at a young age, out of freshman. Uh, both of my kids were able to, to see the varsity field as a freshman. I'm not saying that's going to happen, so don't, don't take this wrong. But take that opportunity, use that, talk to people, get kids here, because they have opportunities to play here that they're never going to have anywhere else. That's what I want to do. Okay, one, one last thing. Uh, one last thing. If you're an eighth grader, you're not sure, you haven't decided, you're here for information, you're checking out spring, whatever it is, okay, still go ahead and sign up on War Room. Okay, when we get that link out to you, sign up. If you don't come, we'll just delete it and we won't bother you anymore uh, if you decide to go somewhere else. But in the meantime, for the next few months, we still do need to communicate with you. So if you could, get your profile updated and we'll get your information and have it. Uh, it's easier to have it and delete it than not have it at all. Steph. Yeah, I just want parents to be aware, yes. so we let all the kids know, we do COVID tests here at school. They have to be COVID tested every two weeks to play. Uh, we sent home um, waivers and stuff for you to sign. If your player's already signed it from previous sports or whatever, they're good to go still. So like one time you sign, but we're gonna do that on Thursday, right? Yes. Thursday for the team. 4.30. At 4.30 here, just at the school and just get them all done and, and test it. Um, it's the High School Athletic Association that does it. Um, I just wanna make sure you guys don't have any questions or anything for me. Yeah, every two weeks, coaches and players have to test. Doesn't matter if you've been vaccinated or not, we still have to test every two weeks. So, uh, I, Mondays, are you doing it Monday still for their school? So, I highly recommend all you kids that are going to school here, try to hit it up on Monday. Monday or Friday. Or Friday, around, right after school. Uh, it's right here in the dance studios where we do them. But you come, incoming freshmen that don't go to this school, we will do it right before practice on Thursday at 4.30. Okay, you've got to do it. It has to happen. It takes, it's a rapid test. It's not hard. It's a quick, and it takes 15 minutes and we know positive, negative. Um, just let so your parents show, you're going to say, well, how am I going to know? If you don't get any information, they're good. You will know immediately. If you don't get an email, they're negative. Yeah, that email, or the email that you put on, the waiver is the email we put in to REDCap, which is the system that the state's using to track everything. That's the email it will go to. It looks really weird. I got phone calls about it. it. It's an encrypted little email that you have to actually click on the link and it will pop up the results and everything. It's, it's kind of different, but it, it's, it, if you don't get a phone call, because we always call parents if they're positive, it's probably negative. Some, some emails don't run through easy or they get lost or whatever, or they're typed in wrong. So, but we will always call parents if we have a positive and let them know. Um, about their and the kids were sent home the waiver, um, Steph, maybe can you email it to me and then I can send one out to everybody also. Um, do we have any blank ones? Yeah, they're in the office. Okay. We'll try to send one out to you guys on Sunday's email so that you guys have, or no, that won't work. We'll have to send, send it tomorrow. this week, tomorrow. Okay, we'll send one out. But make sure your kid gets one. If, if not, you can always have your kid just drop in the office. That'd be better. Grab one. Because I fly, I have an early flight in the morning, so please do that. Just go get one out of the office. If you're an eighth grader, we can have them here. We just have to sign it when you drop them off. We'll find that too. Okay, one final, final thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Brown reminded me. So usually what we do as a program is we, we um, allow the kids to buy their own helmets. Okay. So in the past, what we've had is, is Rydell. Okay? We've got Rydell helmets um, upstairs. That's part of our inventory. We also have some shuts. This year, we're adding another helmet brand named, named, or called Zenith, okay? Z, the, the, this particular brand of helmet uh, and this model is actually the number four rated in terms of the most safe helmets uh, according to the Virginia Tech helmet study, which is kind of the study for helmet safety. Um, one model is number four. I think the other model is number seven. Far more protective than the Rydell's actually that we use. 
and they're not as expensive. Okay, so if you're interested in that, we can we can do that. Uh, we we can get a great discount through Zenith. We will be buying some Zenith team helmets as well, so that the players can have a choice of multiple different, not only sizes but brands to figure out what fits them the best. Um, by saying Zenith's higher rated, that doesn't mean Rydell's bad. Trust me, Rydell's very very good. My son wears a Rydell in college, but those Zeniths. Um, are very highly rated and very inexpensive. Um, so they're a good deal if you're interested in that. So if you are, please contact Coach Brown, let him know, and then as we make the order, we'll make sure that we get that added uh, in. How much time do we have, Coach? Two weeks till we have to order them? No, we got more time. Okay, so we'll have a couple weeks. We'll have some help. If the kids don't want to know sizes, there's really, every single kid here is gonna be a medium or large. It's just the reality. So we have medium or larges that they can try on. <laughs> Um, I think I personally have both, so we can bring them to practice and they can try it on and it'll be either medium or large. To be clarify, because I've had the, the question asked, is a youth, I need a youth, not a lar uh, an adult. There's no difference in sizes. The only difference between a youth helmet and an adult helmet is the shell. An adult helmet is not a, poly it's a polycarbonate shell versus PBS. basically, what is it? A, 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 it's basically a PVC. Hel uh, shells, what it is. High school players cannot wear youth helmets. They cannot, so you not you cannot bring your eighth grade helmet from last year and use it in high school. Yeah, so if you have a little league helmet, not allowed. Okay, but that's the only difference between a doll and youth is just the shell. It's a heavier duty shell. It's a it's a better a better helmet. Uh, we do have some connections with some speed flexes. If you still want to order those, we can still get those um, here in a few weeks. But a lot of us are going to the Zenus just because they're rated higher and they're cheaper. So it depends on what you want. I would let your kids wear whatever they like. And you do not, to be clear, you do not have to own a helmet. The school will provide one, but many kids like their own. And the beauty of it is if you get one now, especially you incoming eighth grade or incoming freshman, you have one helmet the same for all four years. Okay, I'm done. Jason, did you have a comment? Yeah, I have a question. Will the It depends. It depends on where we're at. So for example, when Star Valley comes, we'll play all of the games when Star Valley comes because they have to travel. When we go down to San Juan, we'll take the JV team and the varsity team. The freshmen won't play that week unless we get a separate game. So just largely depends. Once we get into region, the, the Frosh JV games will be on Thursdays. The varsity games will be on Fridays, okay? Um, that'll probably be the case for Beaver and Millard. There's nothing with the endowment game. That's the first game of the year against Cottonwood. There's no lower levels play that week. Okay. Um, so again, just depends. We'll let you know as soon as we can and we'll get it on the calendar. Uh, I don't have any lower level games on the calendar as of right now. Okay. Any other questions for the group? Yep. Um, if the colleges decide to have their camps this year, will equipment be available for them to use to take over? Yeah, we can. Yeah. We'll get it. yeah, we can work that out. The, the biggest thing, and I'm just gonna say this because I'm the one that has to chase people down. The question if you ask if you here is, can we hand out equipment ahead of time if you have a college camp? Yes, and I'm gonna just trump this, Coach Miller, I hope it's okay, because I'm the one that's gonna deal with it. Your fees have to be paid to get equipment. That's it, your, at least your football camp fees. You cannot take equipment without, your, without being paid, because if not, I have to chase you down and get money, and I hate doing that. I do not, I hate, hate, hate being that bad guy. Tim. Yeah. Yes, great question. So Coach Wilbur just said something very important. We will always work with you guys if there's a financial situation for equipment. Okay? Always, always, always we will work something out. But don't come to us the day of camp and say, I need a payment plan. Start right now. And we will work it out. We will not make money not be a reason not to play. And, and if that's an issue, um, it'll be me or it'll be Coach Brown and that's it. Okay, your, your finances don't need to go further than that. We'll keep that confidential. If any issue comes up, just talk to us and we'll get it worked out. And I can promise you we're the only two that even know anything financially. That's it. But yeah, let us know. You're not going to not play, but we're going to figure it out, guys. That you, every kid in this room will play. Money is not going to be the reason why they don't play. We just need to communicate with you. Yes, Larson. You, you, 
<laughs> Why don't we deal with that later? Okay. Any other parental Whose kid comments? Is that? <laughs> yeah, the, the last day, I believe they can. I, I know when my son went there as a senior, we went down the last, it's just the morning, and then they're done by about noon or so, just like snow was last year. So, yeah. Anything else? Where's All right. the iPad at? Are we getting close? Who has not put it in yet? Oh, we still got another half. All right, with that, we're done. I'll be around. I think the coaches will stick around. If you have questions, please get your emails to us.